This is the way it plays down in Oregon. This is a lawyer, his name is Robert Snee, challenging the state senator, Senator Elizabeth Steiner Hayward, MD, on her Oregon bill SB 422, which would remove personal exemption. Interestingly enough, in an article that was published in the American Academy of Family Physicians, the sponsor of this bill is quoted as disregarding the treating, her treating doctor's advice because, in the paraphrase, I did the research and disagreed with her recommendation. She chose to breastfeed her child despite the medication that she was taking um, for her condition and despite the risk to her child from that medication. There was a greater certainty of... I'm, I'm sorry, Madam Chair, I have to interrupt. Yes, please. My integrity has just been impugned by the witness. I'm, and I want to be really clear here, sir. I'm not integrity. No, sir, please allow me to respond. Sure. Thank you, I appreciate that. My doctor at that time was responding, in fact, to drug company paranoia because they'd never tested it in pregnant and breastfeeding women. I called the national expert on drugs and lactation from the University of Texas and asked him personally to clarify that interferons did not transfer from breast milk from the mother's tissue into breast milk before I made that decision for my child. And I also was well aware that breastfeeding is the best thing you can do to protect children from autoimmune diseases. So I would be very grateful if you did not take my decision, my personal decision about my medical care out of context. Thank you. Oh. All right, please. Remember, no, mine we, was science-based. We do not, <laughs> all right. I will have to ask people to leave if we don't have decorum. We do not impugn others, all right? My Thank statement you. was not intended in any manner of impugning or, or maligning the sponsor of this bill, only pointing out that her right to exercise her informed consent and make a different decision in her treating doctor is the same right that we as citizens are seeking for ourselves. As the title to the article says, medical tyranny in action in Oregon, a doctor and senator wants medical freedom for herself but not Oregon citizens. Do you understand how this plays out? Of course, she was being treated for MS, she was being, being given interferon. Her doctor said, do not breastfeed your child. The pharmaceutical companies said, do not do this. But she did some research and she talked to someone at the University of Texas who gave her a second opinion, a different opinion, and she exercised her personal right to make that decision about whether or not she wanted to do that. And I think it's very interesting that she doesn't wanna allow us to have that freedom. And that's what he was calling her out on. That's the hypocrisy of this. He said something else that we should all remember, and of course we've seen this quoted many times when people talk about medical tyranny in his comments to the panel there. He quoted Dr. Benjamin Rush, one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence, who has warned us about medical tyranny, how it would come. He said, the constitution of this republic, as they were trying to create the constitution, he said, here's something we need to put into it. He said, the constitution of this republic should make special provision for medical freedom. To restrict the art of healing to one class will constitute the Bastille of medical science. And of course, that one class is the AMA. All such laws are un-American and despotic. Unless we put medical freedom into the Constitution, the time will come when medicine will organize into an undercover dictatorship and force people who wish doctors and treatments of their own choice to submit to only what the dictating outfit offers. The Constitution of the Republic should make a special provision for medical freedom as well as religious freedom. Exactly. That was a defect in the Constitution, but it was fixed in the Bill of Rights. It was fixed by Amendment Number 9 that says just because we don't mention medical freedom, we are not relinquishing those rights to the government. Unless we explicitly give those rights to the government, it's what 10 says, they don't have those rights. Unless they're delegated to them by the states and by the people, the Constitution doesn't have those rights. Now they have turned that exactly upside down, saying that they have power to do anything and everything they want unless they're expressly forbidden. But even express prohibition of government activity does not stop them. That's where we stand today.